Hey everybody, welcome to Rubber Toe Rundowns, and I'm your host, Roberto. In my rundowns, I share with you details about accessories or techniques that go into the Pacific Rim Speedway diecast track. This episode of Rubber Toe Rundowns is sponsored by Slanman Customs. Be sure to click the link and check out all of his 3D printed accessories for diecast tracks. Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how I do my quick mods. And here I've got two Hot Wheels Kia Stingers, and I always try to grab two because I'd like to test both on the track to see what, which one is naturally faster. So I wonder which one it's going to be today. And also I like to, you know, just push them straight back and forth just to make sure they go straight. If it if it wants to curve left or right, then I definitely am not using that. So here goes the first car. Let's see how well it does. And normally a good time on my track is anywhere between 10 and 11 seconds. And there it is, 10.664 seconds. Let's see what the second one ends up with. Because whenever I'm doing a build, I'd love to get below that sub 10 second time. Oh, this second one is a little bit faster, 10.439 seconds. All right, let's weigh this one. And it looks like it comes in at 37 grams. I like to weigh it at two, three times just to make sure that the measurements all come out about the same. And these are the tools that I like to use when modding a car. Now I won't go into detail what these are right now, but I'll bring them up later on in the video. First off, I'm going to take a 5 64th inch bit and I'm going to drill a pilot hole into the rivets. Even though there's a little hole already from the rivet, I like to drill a pilot hole so it, it helps guide the larger bit to remove the rivet. So I take the 5 64th inch bit and I drill out both rivets and I actually got this in a kit where it comes with uh, it comes from bright vision and it's a 5 64th inch bit a 9 64th inch bit and it comes with a fluted 256 tap with T handle and since I'm also drilling the pilot hole I can go a little bit deeper past the rivet and not worry about damaging it too much so after I drill the pilot hole, I drill the rivet cap off with the 9 64th inch bit. And I keep trying to go down until it, sometimes it pops on its own. But as you can see here, sometimes I have to take a dental pick to pull that last little lip off. Because sometimes I just don't want to keep going and risk drilling into the plastic. So here it is all finished up and you see I've got quite a bit of a burr there on the post and normally I would just use a file to file that off but that's going to take me a while because that's a big kind of chunk. So what I like to do is grab my aluminum tin snips and just kind of pinch that little excess burr off of there and then I'll take the file to it and smooth it down. So boom, see how easy that was? Just clipped it right off. And now I take the file and I'm just gonna take off those burrs and edges so it doesn't get caught back in the base or in the screw once I put it back together. And there we go. Good enough for government work. So next up, I take this air tool lubricant. Some people use like uh, a drilling wax, but I just like to put a little drop of this cutting oil right there on top of the post. Now you notice I put it back together. I just like that personally. Some people will drill into the post without the base and everything in it. But for me, I don't know, maybe it's my OCD, but it, I feel like it helps guide me a little bit so I don't get all crazy. So here I'm taking the 5 64th inch bit again and drilling down into that post to make sure 
I've got enough depth for my 256 uh, hex head screws. And my, the length of my hex head screws are 1 8 of an inch. So after I drill both of those out, just double checking them. Yep, nice little hole right there. Alrighty, up next, some people, this is personal preference. Um, some people say you don't have to tap because the die cast metal is soft enough. For me, I like to do it. I just insert the tap and slowly start turning till it gets a bite. And then once it gets a bite, it's a lot easier. And I just keep screwing it down until it comes to a stop, which that means it's gotten to the bottom of the hole I've pre-drilled already. Um, I just prefer to use a tap because it allows my uh, it allows my 256 screws just to go in easier. I notice when I don't tap those posts that when I go to drive the screw in later I really have to grind and twist the screwdriver to get that screw in there. Now maybe that's a, a tighter fit not sure but I haven't had any issues of screws uh, backing out when I've tapped them so there we go look at that nice little thread right there all right next up is choosing my weights for the car I like these weights I got them off Amazon they're actually tire weights like when you go get your tires balance I bought two sizes the one quarter ounce and the half ounce. And the one quarter ounce is roughly seven grams. Half ounce is 15 grams. And what's really cool is they have this adhesive sticky back. And that's kind of how they're attached to each other. I really like these. So they're solid, they're flat, they fit in tight spaces. And with the sticky back, they stick to each other really, really nice. So I'm going to take the base and I'm going to try to, I always try to fit the half ounce in first and this one just a little bit too wide. So the one quarter ounce definitely fits in there. I would have preferred if the half ounce fit because that would have been perfect. But so it looks like I'm going to at least have to grab two one quarter ounce weights to make up for the half ounce and I'd like to get a third one in there and as you can see here still even the two one quarters there's not enough room to put them in the center of the chassis so we're gonna have to get a little creative here and yep I'm still trying to I'm wishing that it would fit just hoping that maybe it will but you know it won't so it looks like I'm going to have to go there. I may be able to fit the half ounce on top of the quarter, but it most likely be quarter on top of quarter. So what I like to do, I like to keep part of the interior. And so what I do is I cut it, cut the interior out between the dashboard and the rear seat. So that whole middle part, I like to cut out and I like to leave the parts that are help holding down the axles only because it just takes one more step off. I don't have to worry about aligning my axles or gluing my axles, even though I do have a, a jig from Redline Derby. Now, here is a sprue cutting tool that I use for modeling. And I just sit here and I will just cut out the piece that I want out of the interior. And I'm just fast forwarding this because I actually take my time a lot when I do this and just making it all smooth and edges and you can see right here i've got the front part exactly how i want it and then i will cut out the main front seat and the back seat and i don't know if you've noticed there is a hole for the rear post that goes in the back seat so this rear post on this car is a little bit more forward than the average car and i kind of want to keep that in place because it'll help hold it so I, I've kept the hole right there. And then I'm just gonna trim off these edges just to make them smooth or, or straight. If I try to 
use a file, it just takes too long. And sometimes I get impatient. So these sprue cutters are really nice. You can get them at any Hobby Town or Hobby Lobby. Um, they're designed to cut plastic, not metal. Oh, and if I didn't mention it earlier, all the tools I'll be using, I'll put links down in the description below so you can find them easily. So here I've got the rear seat area and that goes right over the axles right there. Now I know exactly the amount of space I'm going to have to use my weights. So let's put the front dashboard back on and I take my one quarter ounce and it just fits in there nicely. So I'm going to take another quarter ounce and just drop it on top. Then I'm going to take the windshield and kind of place it on top because I kind of want to see from the side how much gap I have, which I do have enough gap for another quarter ounce weight, which is really, really cool. So I'm going to cut me off another quarter inch weight right here. And I found these weights. These were actually suggested and, and they're used by G4 Diecast Racing in Northern Colorado. So he... Daddy G put me onto these and I really, really like them. They're super easy to work with. And it's not quite working that third one. So let's rotate it a quarter turn because that windshield comes down at angles on the sides. So maybe it's going to fit here. Let's see. And everything lines up and yes, perfect. So here I have taken the adhesive off the weights already and placed them. So now they're really not moving and they really hold in those uh, parts of the interior that I left. And there's still a clear view through where the posts go. So I'm just going to kind of snap this back together, make sure the wheels are still spinning, that there's no pressure on there anywhere. And let's see what it weighs in at. Oh, don't go away. 56 grams. So we have added 19 grams, which is really cool. So I'm happy about that. So next up, uh, I removed the body again, and now comes the water slide decals. So this is where I like to personalize them. Now I'm, I got my water slide decals uh, from several places, but my most favorite is Josh Poffler from Rust Belt Diecast Racing. So if you reach out to Mr. Poffler over at Rust Belt Customs on Facebook, he will be more than happy to talk with you of you know about your logo, of what other things you want. And also, he actually did a very good video, which I will throw up the link below. And taking that, I'm just measuring up this Monster Motorsports text here and making sure it fits on the hood and one of the things I learned from Mr. Poffler because Mr. Poffler is a wise man is to cut as close as possible to the actual decals and use rounded edges because Mr. Poffler says rounded edges are harder to see once you actually apply it to the car. So I want to double check to make sure it's a good fit right here on the the front of the hood and it is look at that all right so I'm gonna just drop that in the water and it takes about 15 seconds but with you know movie magic we can make that go faster now here is the monster eye which I want to put right there dead center hood and mr. Poffler gave me several different sizes of that and as you can see I got numbers I've got logos um, I suggest that you get black and white numbers because you never know if you're going to have a light car or a dark car. So here, you're going to once it's ready, you're going to slide it off with your thumb and grab it with these angle tweezers and slide it off. And then you're just going to place it where you want. And I'm just going to use my fingers to kind of move it around and press it down where I want to. Then, I also learned this from Mr. Poffler, is hold down one end of the water slide and use a cotton swab to roll the water out from underneath the water slide. 
and I'm getting a little curling on the top of the water slide. It just doesn't want to stick because it wants to curl and that typically does not happen. But my quick solution is clear nail polish. Now this is not a knock on the quality that Mr. Poffler does. He immediately replaced the water slides that were curling because you know that's just what kind of dude he is so I didn't want to throw these away I still want to use them for builds and so I just take some clear nail polish and seal it up really good because normally you want to leave the water slides out about you know 12 hours or the next day to let them breathe because they do exhume gases according to Mr. Poffler. He is, I'm just gonna call him Pocket Poffler because he's just full of a wealth of knowledge. So here I take the Monster Eye, slide it off the paper with one finger and use the tweezers to put it in place. Also this third hand, I just picked this up recently as well and this thing is worth it's weight in gold, I will tell you. Wait, doesn't it look like I'm putting on eye mascara, rolling the cotton swab across that eyeball? It does, that's kind of funny. So let's get a little close up of this and look at that. This looks really cool. Now this is not a white car, it's like a heather gray, like a light gray. I like to use the factory fresh cars because they're pretty much blank. They're just like a production car that comes off the line. Now, to choose some decals to go on the sides. I always try to put a number at the front leading edge of the door, but I also try to use a, you know, a logo to go behind it. So, um, I'm gonna use five today, and I'm not always stuck on using the same number all the time, so five was easy to get to but I'm gonna use five because five is Mike Mays' number from RTR Custom Diecast League, and I'm just gonna use a five just to rub it in, because I can. And so now I'm gonna look for some kind of logo to put on the rear side of those doors. I would love to put that Jack in the Box, but it was just a little bit too big, so I think I'm gonna go with Popeye's Chicken. Popeye's, and again, just using scissors. Some people use a hobby knife, you know, when you wanna get that real close edge but you know don't forget according to Mr. Poffler you gotta round them edges just like that so I will drop that in there and once I pull the Popeyes out oh it's not quite ready so I just drop it back in I don't try to force the water slide off and I drop the five in there as I'm putting this one on multitasking and even though the Popeyes was really red on the white paper, the gray kind of subdues it a little bit. I'm, I'm still okay with that. If it was a white car, it would have popped up really nice. And then I'll just put the big number five right there on the door. So I'm really liking how that one is turning out. Let's get a little close up. See? Just sharp. I really like it. And another reason I use the factory fresh cars is because I think their paint is a little bit better and a little bit stronger. And I don't have to worry about stripping and repainting the car. So here it is all done up with the movie magic. And I've seen it done both sides, put a little shell logo on top. Every car is different, but I always like to have Monster Motorsports somewhere on the car the monster eye and the numbers. And I always like to put numbers on the hood and on the trunk, which this car really doesn't have a trunk. It's more like a hatchback. So I actually took a white number and put it on the windshield itself, which you can kind of see right there. So now I'm gonna put these together, line up the holes and snap the chassis into the posts. And now it is time to put the 256 screws in here. And big, I, I feel like big guy in a little coat trying to manipulate these screws. And now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I should have used the tweezers <laughs> to put them in there. But 
I will just take this little hex driver and just screw them in hand tight. I don't want to over tighten them because if it ends up kind of bowing in like a concave bowing in because the screw is too deep, that's going to put too much pressure on the axles and push the axles up into the wheel wells and we don't want that. So I'm just going to sit here and spin them, make sure they're still free spinning and they are. They're not catching on anything so I'm not going to try to tighten those screws up any longer. So now it is time for the dry lube, dry graphite lube. So as you can see as I spin these wheels, they don't spin for very long. They are relatively quiet, so they don't rattle, which is, which is good, but they're just not spinning uh, as long as I want. I like the Hobby Lube, which you can get from Hobby Lobby or Hobby Town. And this little guy, an acid brush. So my dry lube technique is a combination that I saw on the Scale Racing Channel and the Transport Diecast Racing Channel. So I'll push up on the bottom wheel to get that axle to come up above the wheel and I am very generous with the graphite and I'm just gonna keep pouring it in there lift it back up and take this little acid brush I don't even use the brush really and just tap it it's an annoying sound I know but it allows the graphite to fall into the space in between the wheel and the axle and I usually do this uh, at least twice because I want a good amount of graphite in there and again tappy 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 just tap it in there and you can see the graphite's getting everywhere but I don't really care so I'll keep tapping it then I will lift up the tire and just press it really hard because I really want to work in that graphite into the imperfections of the axles and I'll I'll grind on this for one two three minutes until I feel it's completely loose. If there's any little section that I feel is a little rough, you'll feel it. And I just rub it in really, really good. Let's tap off some, some, some of the graphite there. Take the brush, brush off the excess, blow, blow on it a little bit. All right, let's see where it's at. Better, better, but still not quite where I want it. So I'm gonna do this a third time And again, I'm gonna put the links to Scale Racing Channel's video and Transport Diecast Racing's video in here. And again, tapping it with the acid brush, a, which is a metal handle brush, really. And I'm gonna just grind that graphite in there. Just rub it in really hard. I'm, I'm not being gentle with this thing whatsoever. I'm really pushing against these wheels to make sure that graphite really rubs rubs into there so let's shake off the excess and then brush off the excess we're gonna blow on it and let's see how it does now much better I'm liking that but still not quite done but I'm gonna go ahead and do all four wheels and now I'm going to do the inside of the wheels that's against the axle and the chassis. And I like to use Maximum Velocity Graphite. It has this nice little thin applicator. And I like to just put some graphite right there between the inside wheel and the chassis. And again, I'm just going to try to grind that into the axles right there and, and rub it in there. Because sometimes the graphite, believe it or not, it won't go all the way down the axle when you're putting it on the outside. So let's see. And see, just from that one application of the maximum velocity on the inside, it spins a whole lot more, which is exactly what I want. So let's get her up to the track and see how she's going. But it looks like she can't get up there. It seems like the police are still doing their mandatory curfew. But it looks like they're going to let them go. Yep, they're going to let them do the run. So let's see how she does on her maiden voyage after this mod. Up and around the tower, around the sewer vent, through Kickapoo Pass, around the helipad, and she's flying. Kaiju's lair for the finish. Uh-oh, is she going to hit these cop cars? Ooh! Uh, sorry 
didn't mean that. And 9.992 seconds, exactly where I want it to be. Thanks for checking out this episode of Rubber Toe Rundowns. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more diecast racing. You can also join the Monster Motorsports Diecast Racing Facebook group. Until the next update, stay safe and keep your wheels on the road.